This is Nilotic Hall of Fame where religions are recognized. Yeah, you can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the King Kong banging on your chest, you can talk to God, you can be the hero. Standing in the hall. Welcome. This is the Hall of Fame and today I'm bringing to you one of the Nilotic heroes, Dr. Matthew Lokuya. Though he's not yet a national hero in Uganda, today we recognize him as a Nilotic hero. Thank you. But when I came here, Late November, I realized that um, uh, fought for his life in there were the two, the two parents who had different qualities. Hospital, Uganda. Dr. Lokuya, a physician and supervisor of the same hospital, had been at the forefront of the battle against the Ebola virus disease, EVD, when it broke out in Gulu in October 2000. At the time of the outbreak, Dr. Lokuya was in Kampala pursuing further studies when he received a telephone call drawing his attention to a strange disease killing people in Uganda and Gulu. He rushed to Lachio Hospital where he studied students' charts and compared their symptoms with information found in publications by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. But when I came here, I realized that um, they were the two, the two parents who had different qualities. They were really committed and they believed in what they were doing and, and this is the difference with the other, the other doctors. I mean, the other doctors were here for a short time to do their work, they were going away. But these two parents, you see, they, had, they, they were believing in what they were doing. They, they, they had total commitment and they, 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 they were ready to give anything for what they were doing. And the World Health Organization, oh, relating to infectious fevers that cause bleeding, highly suspicious that it could be Ebola. He informed the authorities at the Ministry of Health in Kampala. Without waiting, the queer instituted control measures. He isolated the patients to a unit which he had set up in line with the World Health Organization guidelines. Organized ambulance teams for taking patients to the hospital and constituted burial teams. At the same time, he encouraged staff and volunteers to care for patients. A team dispatched to Gulu from the Uganda Virus Research Institute carried out investigations and confirmed Ebola. The Ministry of Health, World Health Organization, CDC, and other partners all organized a press conference to send out the message. In the villages in Gulu, several people were hired to do a door-to-door -door search for the sick hidden by families. There was also an official announcement that dead bodies must be immediately wrapped in polythene bags and buried. This seemed more of a disposal, however, rather than a burial as understood in the cultural context. According to the Chile tradition, the female relatives of the deceased had the responsibility of washing and dressing the dead before burial. Thereafter, those who had participated in funeral preparations would wash their hands in a common basin together with other mourners. Although intended to symbolize solidarity, this practice had to be stopped in the midst of the Ebola outbreak. Working with other partners, Dr. Lokuya engaged the communities and explained to them the risk associated customary burial practices. People heard it, but this caused a lot of anxiety. Meanwhile, the number of patients at La Chou increased daily, so much so that by the third week, there were 60 patients and only three doctors, five nurses and five nursing assistants who had volunteered to work in the isolation unit. Unlike the common practice in most hospitals in Uganda, where family members give care to the sick, this could not be done in the isolation unit. This left a few medical workers to tackle the disease on their own with limited capacities. Moreover, most of the health workers were not used to wearing protective gear such as guns, gloves, masks and goggles, nor were they used to the practice of constantly washing hands after contact with patients. There were certainly some lapses in covering up properly or even washing hands and as a result, 
several medics got infected and died. It is reported that when called out of bed to attend one of the infected nurses in critical condition, Dr. Lokuya forgot to put on goggles, thereby violating one of his fundamental rules. Think with your hand, not with your head, not with your heart. Later it was confirmed that Lokuya was Ebola positive and he was wished to the isolation ward where he did not allow even his emotion free feel wife Margaret to get close to fear of infection. Margaret was very frustrated that she could not even touch her husband or take care of him. As he lay on the hospital bed in the isolation ward, Dr. Lokuya expressed word about his condition, claiming, Oh my God, I think I will die in my service. He appealed to God, praying, If I die, let me be the last. He drew his last breath at 1.20 a.m. on December the 5th, 2000, and his body was immediately zipped up in a bulletin bag. His wife was not allowed to look at the body because it was highly infectious, reflecting on a video clip on Lokuya's body, wailing hidden right. An Ebola Marion team dressed in protective gear that seemed suitable for a lunar landing rolled up to the graveside at 4 p.m. In a white ambulance, they whisked a simple wooden coffin out of the ambulance and lowered it into the grave with ropes. All the while, one member of the burial team sprayed the coffin, the ropes, and his colleagues with jig bleach. More a disposal procedure than than a burial. It was over in less than five minutes. In total. The outbreak killed 224 people. Indeed, Dr. Lokuya, who had proven himself a fearless fighter of EVD, was the last casualty of the 2000 Ebola outbreak in Uganda. Unfortunately, however, he was neither the last Ugandan nor African to die of the killer disease. Seven years after his death in 2007, Uganda was hit with yet another Ebola catastrophe, killing 37 people in Bundibuyo. And in 2011, another outbreak in Duero killed one person. In July 2012, yet another outbreak killed 17 in Kibale. And shortly after, in December 2012, another instance killed four in Duero. As we talk now, in 2022, Ebola is still not yet wrapped out of Uganda after an outbreak late this year. But Uganda still has not yet inducted Lokuya as a national hero. So as it is, Dr. Matthew Lukuya deserves the nihilistic Hall of Fame. And actually, from Kirkum, growing up from a fishing family, who are just like other children, gave his life to save the people, and still not yet a national hero in the country, we recognize him as a nihilistic hero. Welcome to the nihilistic Hall of Fame, and me. Your soul, rest in peace, Dr. Martin Lukuya.